sunglasses safety answer here and this will be my occultism video for the third time the original I made on July the 1st 2022 and that was the date when my grandfather also died uh, my mother called me during the making of that video I still made it the video and on April the 3rd uh, to, uh, 2023 I made uh, like a watchable video out of that original one since I had no clue how to use lighting at that time so it ended up more like a criminal uh, confession without voice distortion so uh, let's uh, just stick to the basics but uh, like I said uh, I came through with this video uh, to public uh, on the day that my grandfather died these old things happened uh, when I was like uh, 18 years old to, uh, and it lasted for a year until I was 19 years old uh, and I came forward with this uh, as I was like 33, 32. So, uh, and I was always afraid that it, I didn't have any validation for my experiences, but uh, now I kind of feel like my grandfather's death gave me the validation. I kind of felt like a push to my shoulders the original day when I made the video and uh, you are uh, most welcome to uh, form your own opinion about me. I might be a liar, but to remember that then I'm lying on the dying day of my grandfather and taking full advantage of his death. He was the only grandfather I knew. Uh, uh, my mother's sad grandfather died before I met him. So I loved him dearly. Uh, so this makes me a really, really, really slimy liar if I'm lying. And for the crazy theory, for the mad theory, uh, I have been in like uh, uh, mental health uh, like uh, services. Uh, I have like only what has been diagnosed to me is like personality disorder and I have never uh, like signed uh, signed that uh, as like the truth about my condition. My youngest sister has HDHD, my second youngest sister has ADD. Her young son has HDHD and my younger brother has has a reading disorder in school so pretty certain that this HDHD too and that I have only HDHD too. So now, uh, so and even if I were like uh, on the time I was mad like on psychosis uh, even uh, the worst diagnosis of psychosis can't describe what I uh, or like wipe off the possibility of supernatural occurrences really happening so let's get started and in addition to the first video that I made I'm going to tell you what really pushed me towards the occultism. So, um, I had a pretty normal Christian background. I have never been an atheist. I was like, uh, not a Christian, but not against Christianity. That all changed when I was uh, this... Uh, hold on, zeitgeist, but documentary. And the documentary was really like uh, against uh, governments, against banks, against 
religion, especially Christianity, they said that Christianity is somewhere shit just like a uh, just adjusting the mic. Uh, somewhere shit just um, converted to Christianity. And I kind of fell to uh, this strange place where I didn't want to become an atheist, but uh, I didn't have anywhere to turn, and this kind of led me the path to like start a little bit dabble in the occult, uh, re studying religions and studying new age, and. Well, then happened this one dream, and I know dreams are boring, but I will tell it anyway, since it launched the one year uh, actual practice of occult occultism. So, uh, let's start with the dream. The dream goes like this. Uh, I had a friend from my school, I was uh, in school, in social and healthcare school, and I had a lady friend who I will say is, was a little bit thick, but uh, my only friend at the school, and we will call her Mona. And so I saw a dream where uh, me and Mona were sitting uh, with my friend, uh, let's call him Voldemort, and my ex-girlfriend, and we will call her, her Red. So, I will tell you that I used to live in mom's basement when I was younger, and there was like a underground garage, and so uh, you could like enter the garage from my room, and you could go like outside of the garage, and that's where usually me and my friends used to sit. So I was sitting there, uh, like uh, next to Mona, and it felt like we were a couple. And next to me was Voldemort, and he was a guy, quite slim guy. But uh, he was like having huge steroid muscles, and my girlfriend, ex-girlfriend Red, was his girlfriend, and they, and they were like socializing. I was like dumbfounded of the situation. So the next day came, came and I went to tell my friends about this, and it was not so long ago that there was this. Uh, party that my ex-girlfriend wanted to have and since my all my friends were going I went too and so um, it will be relevant soon so I told my friends who were like uh, skateboarding and they were sitting in a car uh, this dream that I had and one of my friends told me that uh, on that date when uh, we were drinking at my girlfriend's uh, parents' house, uh, there happened after I left. Well, there was this thing that happened when I drink. I don't drink anymore since I'm a Christian and I have this unknown eye disease that makes my eyes uh, sore to harsh light. So I'm not able to use monitors, or um, or at least monitors that have like harsh light. Like uh, laptops are quite fine, and mobile phones are fine, but uh, like real monitor or TV is too much for me, and sunlight. So uh, and reading like concentrating, so my right eye becomes sore from all that kind of things. Thus I'm wearing the sunglasses that are like prescribed to me. So, 
Uh, I don't drink anymore, but the, and I didn't drink often. Uh, but uh, at this party, I drank too much. I drank too uh, too much different alcoholic beverages, and I ended up like lying on the grass. Uh, pretty disgusting sight, let's say that only. And Mona still. Um, she was kind of like only knew me and my ex-girlfriend when she was I invited her or I, and she came and lied next to me and I was like out cold I don't remember anything after I passed out on the grass so um, when I woke up uh, like people were calling me to come to like join them but I ran away from the house they tried to catch me but I was too fast and uh, I guess I walked back to my parents house since I woke up there but um uh, okay so my so I didn't I wasn't present when this happened so one of my friends told me that uh, when, uh, that he was uh, felt disgusted by actions of Voldemort, my friend, who uh, had uh, proposed to play strip poker. Like I said, uh, Mo Mona was a little bit of a thick girl, so and. Like my friend said that, um, and I knew it too, that this idea of Voldemort was only to see my ex-girlfriend nude. So, and guess the game went on really, since uh, my friend said that he was really disgusted how like uh, my friend Voldemort and all my other friends were like, uh, like uh, totally eating with their eyes, my ex-girlfriend. Okay, so uh, I was like upset about that information, uh, and I went to talk uh, to my ex-girlfriend. Why? Why would you do this? Uh, like uh, strip poker uh, in front of my friends, and. I was a little bit of in a de detective mode because of the dream, because I talked about the dream to my friend and my friend told me the information so I like was inter in, in the <sighs> interrogating, interrogating. <laughs> sorry my English is sometimes bad, interrogating. Okay, you know what I mean. Interrogating. Now, it's fine. Okay, so I was interrogated. I was talking with my girlfriend, <laughs> ex-girlfriend, uh, and I asked what happened that night, and why did you do that? Uh, why did you, uh, like, why did you strip uh, in front of my friends for that game? And, I started to ask what happened between you and Voldemort, my friend, since I saw that they were like a couple in my dream. So my uh, ex-girlfriend said that they shared a kiss and I was so angry at for that that I said I want, never want to be like, have anything to do with you. But I felt bad since my ex-girlfriend started to cry and I said, yeah, 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 I'm not going to be your somewhat of friend, like distant acquaintance in my head. But uh, so the whole thing went like uh, from crying to really awkward situation. So I just left. This time for real, I was about to leave and <laughs> leave her for good. But. Uh, I went to then to talk to my friend Voldemort. So uh, I said that um, Voldemort uh, 
I saw this dream and, and Voldemort was into occult like me, but he was more into hippie style occultism and like philosophy at the time. So he was like um, not regretful at all and pretty bash, I'd say. Uh, I told her uh, him about the dream, I told him how uh, I get to know what had happened that, uh, about the strip poker and then that I had talked with my ex-girlfriend Red and, and that I knew that they shared a kiss and my friend just basically said no we had sex and I was like kind of dumbfounded girlfriend lied to me, ex-girlfriend Red lied to me so um, I was like, uh, and I, like I said, I was ready to uh, erase her from my life. Uh, well, I don't, like, I have only one ex-girlfriend, but I didn't want to spend time with her anyways. But uh, I, I still, like, um, didn't like the idea that uh, a friend would go after my girlfriend. So I was like, why, why would you do this? Uh, we, uh, he had a girlfriend too, like, same time we pretty much started dating and same time after a year pretty much both of us like um, got dumped so uh, it hurt me to think that uh, my friend like got the best parts of this both uh, relationships since he uh, like had my girlfriend uh, to bed with him uh, so my uh, friend was really into this hippie philosophy and he was like uh, saying that women are like sofas and men just uh, like sit and spend their time on that sofa but it's like open, open hunting season for the sofa after that and, and he wasn't budging and uh, had no remorse about it so so nothing, uh, I could no, do, do nothing about that and just be angrily, silently anger, angry to him. And I went after a little while had passed uh, to talk to my ex-girlfriend Red and I said that uh, I know that uh, like Voldemort told me that you had sex, it was not uh, just a kiss. And my ex-girlfriend Red was like, uh, she had changed, she was not like hiding anything anymore. She was just brassily like saying that no, we had sex two times, uh, even on a different night. And I was like, oh, <laughs> that hurt. But um, I will just mention it that I talked I didn't spend time anymore with my ex-girlfriend or Voldemort after that but uh, I talked with Voldemort after many years and uh, he said that the uh, second time that they had sex never happened since uh, my ex-girlfriend Red passed out they were drinking again so uh, so, after that I was launched in this mindset that I was angry because I felt betrayed by my be best friend at the time, Voldemort, and my only girlfriend that I had, and I was um, trying to uh, do something with my life. Uh, I try to do music uh, I didn't succeed in it, in it and I didn't have the uh, like the drive to get good so uh, I wanted to do something different still so the occultism dream drove me to uh, quit school I didn't want to become anything out of that school that I went to 
So school dropout and only thing in my mind to study occultism. I wanted to make it to f at least feel official. So I knew that I needed uh, first to do is to sacrifice something to the spirits to uh, gain something out of them. So I loved to watch movies at night, series and whatnot, my bedtime stories. So I sacrificed my bedtime stories. I just, uh, instead of watching something in the evening, I would surf the internet and look for uh, occultism tips, what to do, and so uh, I kind of used all my nights and some portions of the day searching the internet, trying to find uh, different things to do with uh, occultism, magic, anything, in connection to the spirit world, anything. And I went to library, loaned every book about New Age and occultism, tried all those things. And but the uh, only thing that uh, I kind of could trust really was uh, shamanism and trying to get trans. And I, I'll tell you a joke that I told my friends that uh, when I watched Zeitgeist and I said like, if people would uh, like uh, find an old book in the ruins and it, the old book would say that there lives invisible animals in the forest. Would people start to believe in that just because of tra tradition and the oldness of the book? So this was like direct mockery of Bible and traditions of Christianity and Judaism. So uh, what happened is that I fell, uh, I digged my own grave. I couldn't trust anything that I found on foreign religions, um, anything on New Age, not, not much on the occultism side of the internet, nothing concrete really. So I tried to go to the source and I read that uh, like uh, shamanism is the oldest religion on earth and even if that is not true, even the ancient Sumerians uh, were talking about the flood on earth and a lot of Christian uh, stories come from the time of Sumerians, so that is uh, like the oldest civilization that we know, so Christianity is the oldest civil religion that we have. But uh, Finland has a tradition of shamanism. We are not part of uh, Nordic uh, religions, we had our own religion, so our shamanism is tied to theirs. And well, uh, I started to find a, a spirit animal for myself. Uh, I will show you now my occult tattoos. I tried tattooing myself, like uh, becoming a real occultist. And I'm sorry about dressing a little bit, but they need to be shown. So these was like I drew this myself and went to get the tattoo to remember always you're a bear a shaman bear is the king of the forest and this one just I took when I was already a Christian and I wanted to do something like yin and yang and this was uh and this was like, like only a fun fun thing for me to do since uh oh, it was like supposed to be like uh, some medium got this 
this uh, <laughs> design from aliens through, through her medium forces, but uh, I have never believed it, but I tattoo it anyway since Celts believed if you have three swirls on your skin, you're like tripling your uh, spiritual power and what this is, is this is just a decoration after I had quit uh, that uh, occultism, this is like the dark sun from Star Wars, the like uh, criminal organization and I'm not like wanting to be a part of a like their galactic criminal organization but I used to buy Star Wars comic books where uh, Dark Maul kills all the leadership of the Dark Sun and I like loved Dark Maul and those comics especially. So let's continue. So, uh, <clears throat> so I ended up only doing the shamanism practices. I had like a plastic bucket or something, something really cheap, not a real drum. And I was uh, banging it, uh, uh, trying to get into a trance. I had like a taboo of... Uh, I didn't want to get any people uh, like uh, drawn into my occultism. I didn't want it to affect my social life in any way. It was my own experiment. Well, I was left out of a lot of social life when I didn't attend any school or anything, but I uh, kind of alienated myself from people during that year. But uh, I felt after like three or four months trying to read everything uh, from books and internet and trying to get to a trance that nothing is happening. And then I decided to break that taboo and as I was a young man I was interested in finding a girlfriend so I was drumming I stopped drumming and I asked from the spirits uh, who uh, I had given a free rein to my body like possess me or uh, talk to me appear to me anything goes so you have my full permission for anything my free will is yours to use and so uh, I asked for advice who would be my girlfriend so um, we will go call her Sabrina since uh, it has same amount of letters and uh, I only knew one person named Sabrina so when the voice started to, uh, like, I started to hear a voice in my head. It was like, so, so I knew from the first two letters, no one else has those two first letters. So, okay, I knew already and it wasn't a surprise to me. Sabrina was uh, like the prettiest girl I have ever saw. We never had anything, but uh, like uh, we won a dancing competition that my school, the uh, social healthcare school, funded, and like uh, well, my schoolmates were the judges, and well, we danced pretty great, but she had a boyfriend, so nothing came of it, even if I actually tried. Uh, but uh, yeah, so uh, it didn't come as a surprise. So I was like, okay, I already know who my brain is to talking to me. But uh, I couldn't stop the voice. Of course, this can be just my uh, own thinking. But uh, it was really weird how the voice came to my head, and I was like. Okay, I know it. This person, stop, 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 stop my brain. Shut up. 
and I just was like shut up, shut up, shut up thinking at the same time I was hearing so breed, uh, that kind of creepy voice in my head and I couldn't stop it I, and even if I knew what was it, who the person was but uh, I went to to have a coffee with that girl she had moved away from where I was living, so my friends gave me a lift uh, with their car and they <laughs> stared at us the whole coffee drinking moment. But uh, the moment was like uh, not at all like uh, promised by the spirit. So the coffee was hot and atmosphere was cold, and I left there just having <laughs> had a coffee. No, okay. And now that's just a voice in a head and the first part, well, if we don't count the prelude because of the dream, because that just drove me to actually practice. So now we will go to the second part of this. So it would be called a mind reading through a proxy. So I got my mind read it by someone else. Okay, now Voldemort comes back into the picture. There was this uh, time in my life when uh, my father, who knew that I was really into occultism, asked uh, if I would want to accompany him to uh, this uh, friend of his who was working in one of schools in Finland. They are like, uh, I don't remember the school name, it's a private school and they have like occultism and like like some kind of religious studies or, or like philosophy studies that are like uh, well not Christianity, everything else but Christianity like, and the founder, it was Steiner schools, Steiner, and the Steiner is the founder of these schools, and he, so, he himself was a occultist, so he claimed that he had had talks with fire spirits, he called them salamanders, and so my father was uh, supposed to help the guy with his renovating of uh, half his attic and I was supposed to get awful knowledge out of the guy but he was not like he was interested about it but he didn't know much about it and the school didn't teach much about it so uh, I felt like I had just come there and and I was gonna leave empty-handed, so I just decided that I would go to explore the city at least. I didn't want to talk with the guy anymore. So, uh, there happened to this, uh, like, B uh, grade horror movie scene where uh, I was like, uh, was like pond or something on the city. Uh, there was this really thick fog. I have never seen that thick fog in my life. I couldn't see through the fog, like uh, and like on um, <clears throat> the street where I was, uh, like uh, street where I was uh, on the middle of that, uh, watching that pond or something a body of water but um, so I couldn't see through the fog in any direction so I started to hear footsteps like um, yeah B grade horror movie style so but I was kind of wary still so uh, since uh, no one would see what happened inside that fog so I wrapped uh, like a chain 
that was like the lock on the bicycle that I had loaned from the guy, my father's friend. So uh, I wrapped the chain around my fist and was like hiding it and waiting what was gonna happen. So, but there came this really nice looking, not threatening at all, my size guy, young guy. And he stopped talking with me and, uh, he, well, he was a gay man. He said that I'm a good looking man and uh, he liked my hair. I had like uh, black hair and I had like messed the hair up like, like I'm doing right now, but it was a longer hair. It, it's almost like an afro, but not quite. Uh, punk rock afro. So, uh, and he was like, oh, you, you are lost. Uh, you can come to my house and I will make you breakfast and all. And I said, like, no. And it was that time when he said, you're a good looking guy, you should come with me. <laughs> but I, I declined and I told him where I needed to go and uh, that I'm lost. And he told me told me perfectly how to get there, like uh, I was just supposed to follow uh, like a, a water tower and for me this was like a really nostalgic thing since where I was born uh, I like lived beneath a water tower so I remember from a young age watching water tower from like a <laughs> when I was a little, really small child, I was watching that huge water tower. And I thanked the guy and I got perfectly, like, just searching, just following that water tower I got where I needed to go. And But I was wondering after that, that uh, about my sexuality since I was thinking, should I have felt like some kind of disgust or anything? Uh, like, aren't uh, like hetero men supposed to be homophobic? And, uh, well, I just, uh, I wasn't sure anymore. I felt no, uh, nothing nothing bad towards the guy and he helped me out and this started this uh, that I was like uh, thinking maybe I am bisexual I have never had these thoughts before and it was tied to occultism too since uh, like sex magic is one thing that I had read about in occultism so I knew that Voldemort had uh, been talking that he's uh, wondering if he's bisexual and he had wanted to hold hands with a man. So I knew this from my other friend. So, um, so I decided to went to uh, meet my former best friend. He was uh, practicing occultism way harder than he used to. He had the same hippie uh, mentality, but he also thought that he could read minds. So uh, as we met, uh, he all, I told him about what had happened, that I'm also thinking if I'm bisexual. And he was like offering again that he, he wanted just to hold hands with a man. Uh, I didn't want to hold hands with a man. So I returned to my parents' house where I lived at still, and some time got, got, some time goes by, and my mother comes to me and says that um, they are going to go meet uh, with my siblings. The uh, my mother's well, side, uh, my mother's side grandmother. So uh, I knew that the house would be empty, so I said no, because I had a plan. I invited Voldemort to uh, come into the home, house uh, uh, 
and what I was planning was like uh, to uh, actually try uh, home like gay sex to just make sure and and gain some kind of like break some kind of limits that I have in my mind that what I cannot do for the spirits and and I was going to, in my mind I was going to become the bottom one I was not going to uh, in any way dominate my former friend I actually uh, am disabled I was disabled uh, during my uh, whole relationship with my ex-girlfriend since I went my well sex hurt with my former girlfriend so I went to a surgery since my younger brother had like a too tight foreskin when he was younger so I thought I had the same thing and I had but uh, the doctor said that you have a too short tendon under your penis and it will take only five minutes for you to uh, uh, for us to get this uh, surgery done and I didn't believe him but I didn't want to uh, stop the procedure for some reason I didn't want him to think that I, I was chickening out of it so I said to him that if you really believe that it, that is the cause of my uh, pain during sex then you have and it takes only five minutes you have to do it without anesthesia and the doctor said yes I was pretty certain that he would like to try to scare me or uh, I was fearing the worst and the worst happened I was stabbed uh, beneath my penis and without anesthesia so uh, I tried to kick the doctor out of reflex and the all he was older man but he knew something was coming so he dodged uh, and said medication now and I was heavily medicated so much medicated exactly that I started to hallucinate from the pain shock and the medication so I was watching a grid on the ceiling and the grid was moving in my eyes for the whole procedure and looked like uh, like it was a grid that there was air ventilation above it so the grid looked like a, like a electric stairs in the stores so and I developed premature ejaculation I pretty much uh, I'm thinking I'm a monk now but as I was in relationship at the time I never told my ex-girlfriend right about the surgery it was too uh, embarrassing since I was so crazy to go without anesthesia and well um, I the, it kind of did some kind of hyper like um, hypersensitivity to me and I would always fail on bed uh, and like <laughs> the sex would last for less than a minute if I didn't like masturbate before sex so uh, disabled really badly I went to like uh, it's called urologist in Finland it male genitalia expert later in my life and asked if this was possible that I developed the uh, hypersensitivity from that uh, weird surgery so he said yes it's definitely possible and so uh, you can believe that I didn't have any kind of uh, 
any kind of desire to be the top since I was a disabled person. Uh, well, I hadn't talked about it to Voldemort, I, we didn't talk anymore pretty much. Uh, but um, when he arrived at my parents' house, my parents and siblings were still there. My friend the Voldemort was really into occultism and the strength of the mind, so he was trying to uh, like control the flame of a candle with his mind and what I was seeing was like okay we got the candle light this is going to become a yeah, what would you say a romantic evening for us <laughs> I was just thinking it's only energy and I will gain energy from it but uh, so, well when my parents left I was in the Caras with my friend and I just said that uh, we are both thinking if we are gay so should we should just have gay sex to make sure and my friend Voldemort declined <laughs> said no declined and I then kind of wanted to have a little bit of revenge that he slept with my girlfriend and since he was so into that hippie mindset of openness and like that so I said that then you have to tell say to me that I'm more open-minded than you are and he did he said that I'm more open-minded I am not gay I'm straight uh, I have no interest in same sex so it was all just uh, just something uh, craziness or something I needed to find out but uh, the atmosphere was really awkward so I guess Voldemort wanted to leave because of that maybe so uh, I said that I would walk him like to the front of our house as I was walking um, he was walking like ahead of me so I was thinking that oh my god I have like missed uh, meeting my grandma and I have like uh, suggested uh, se to have sex with other man and like what am I doing what do I want to do in my life and I just thought that I just want to love really corny but really creepy when my uh, friend Voldemort turned around and he said to me I just got this thought in my head that I want to love and I said uh, well I just uh, thought that like really hard that I want to love and I kind of try to get the gay sex still happening so I said to my friend did you feel like that I was in love with you or with love with uh, everything uh, like generally and my friend said that uh, it felt more like you were in love with everything generally okay that is the mind reading through a proxy I got my mind read and now is the last thing and it's a possessed mp3 player so uh, let's get get straight into it so my friends were uh, one night they were saying that uh, they want to search things uh, in uh, the night and I said that I am not interested searching for anything in the night that I am like I am only interested in occultism and I said that uh, I, I don't want to be alone if you are going to search for something in the night so uh, I said that I will only bring a candle if you are having flashlights so 
we started to uh, like drive away from my parents' house and oh no, I d- I was living still in my parents, but uh, where was I? Why was I there? Since uh, I had this MP3 player and I okay, I was I had moved and I had this like place where I was meditating. I'm sorry that I skip a little bit before in time in this part, but uh, so um, I I was living in like on my own and still practicing like shamanism somewhat and and still keeping that uh, like no uh, entertainment in the evenings and studying occultism up and I had this uh, it was like a, it's not a river a small body of water that was like flowing and I was sitting next to it it was still enough water that there was a small wooden bridge over it so uh a stream, small stream of water, but uh, so uh, uh, one of my friend, this uh, guy who is uh, like Russian, but uh, he has been born in Finland, so he can speak Russian and Finnish perfectly. Really nice guy. He's still my friend, and like. Uh, he had given me a mp3 player but I accidentally when I was like meditating and listening to music well that's not meditation that's just listening to music but uh, I was sitting uh, on that stream on the body of water and my mp3 player was on a rock and it slipped to the water as I was leaving or changing position or something so the mp3 player did not work and I show it to my Russian Finnish friend and he like um, took the, uh, I don't know what it's called, but uh, the screen off from the mp3 player and it started to work again. Like uh, some of, it was some kind of touch screen so some things were like uh, unable. I was unable to use it fully after it. Like I was not able to uh, switch songs, but I was able to listen to music and change the volume and like quick forward and quick backward, if I remember correctly. So, but. Uh, I had this MP3 player and for some reason I was at my parents' garage and <coughs> so my friends wanted to go search things in the night and I was going with them with a candle, they had all flashlights. Uh, so we stopped at a party where I saw one of my former like uh, schoolmates uh, friend that I <coughs> that I practiced uh, do some type of filming like it would be jackass originally and like uh, we went to watch uh, WWE so wrestling in Helsinki with the guy who filmed our stunts and his, uh, I met his father through a drawer since his father let his son drink so it was the first place I ever drunk myself uh, to a pretty much drunken state but um, well uh when I saw this guy, I was kind of RAS, since we had been RAS, doing RAS videos, so 
I slammed a candle in front of him since he seemed depressed and I said that there's a candle for you and he said thank you since my father died oh, like a little while ago I was uh, in my heart I was happy that I had validation that my occult practices were uh, like uh, bearing fruit I thought that I had like reached some kind of level in occultism but I didn't want to upset my friend former friend so I was like sympathetic to him even if I were joyous in my heart since I thought that that was like a Uh, like a nice thing still to do to slam the candle but uh, well I didn't leave him the candle that would have been a really nice thing to do I took the candle with me as we started to go to this golf course and so as my friends started to search what they wanted to find they lit their flashlights and I just like uh, lit my candle and I was walking with candle in hand in a golf course looking for something anything so uh, what I found was like I saw something and but behind that something was a trail of uh, like grass that had frost on top of it like for a, a pretty long stripe of frost in that uh, area nowhere else there were any snow or anything all snow had smelt melted <coughs> so uh It was really strange sight and it was like I thought this is most beautiful sight that I have ever seen in nature. It, was, uh, it had like a uh, for four three to four steps like uh, of a length to uh, of a frozen grass. So in my mind I spin this tale to me myself that uh The thing that is in front of that uh, that object is only material and it's like earthly and I want to experience spiritual and if I walk this uh, this uh, frozen trail to the end of that trail I will experience something spiritual that I knew that this night was like special after the happening with my former friend and the candle and so I started to walk like it took uh, like four or three steps to get to the end of that frost and frozen grass the tips of the grass were frozen so I was just listening to music with candle in hand and just waiting for anything to happen and then I got this thought in my head that I wasn't into like alien things no they were too far fetched for me But uh, I knew of alien things that like uh, you can get messages from outer space in open areas. So I was like in a really open area as it was a golf course. So I thought that I could get like uh, messages from outer space. And when I like thought that I became frightened since my mp3 player gradually um, like um, the, gradually the song went down and I thought my, to myself that uh, 
the MP3 player broke. That it worked for a while, but it in broke in the end. But what happened next was that I heard um, from this one anime called Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z made by a uh, uh, Mr. Akira Toriyama who has passed away recently so God bless his soul and uh, so I heard from Dragon Ball or Dragon Ball Z they were all all like, uh, like four words and they were all from different uh, different uh, parts of the anime so what I heard was a character called Vegeta yelling no no the Saiyan the Saiyan and as I was thinking that uh, okay this could be like, like messages from outer space the Saiyan are an alien race uh, like a uh, one major contribution for my enthusiasm for uh, occultism was Dragon Ball Z gaining power, like spiritual power. So uh, after I heard that uh, short four words, again gradually the song came back up and I was like left with the dumbfounded with the candle in my hands I called all my friends oh you got to hear this you got to hear this oh my god they were pretty close also they just put their uh, flashlights off and they came to me and I said that you got to hear this I was like uh, I found something that you were looking, but uh, I was like, uh, I, I, I thought that I, I needed to walk uh, that frosty trail to the end to get the, like spiritual information, and then I heard this voice that, uh, uh, like Vegeta from Dragon Ball, said, "No, no, the Saiyan, the Saiyan," and they were all silent and. Then my like uh, best friend at the time said uh, that uh, did you hear these words in your head? So I said that uh, if I had heard the voices in my head, where did the music go? Should I have not heard the music also if it was in my head? And then there was a long silence again, and then my new best friend said that uh, Where is the thing that we are looking for? And I said that, uh, oh, it's just a couple steps from here, it's, uh, it's like uh, on the, like the st starting point of the frozen trail where I started and I watch and the trail had vanished so we spent like a long time searching that single area and we didn't find the item my friends were looking for and they were pretty pissed at me since I didn't pick it up okay that happened and well, it wasn't the only time it happened, since it happened every time on that song after that. I didn't listen to my mp3 player like uh, when I was at home, but when I uh, was like riding my bicycle to meet my friends. So uh, we gathered in one of my friends who were roommates in their house. So, I, like I said, I could not change songs, but I could listen to the playlist like over and over again. 
and it usually like uh, when I drove my bicycle I got like to the halfway of the playlist and way up and I traveled back I like got almost to the end or like over the end of the playlist a little bit so I always knew that uh, when I was like bicycling towards my friends when I would leave I would have the opportunity to hear the song and always on the same spot on the song the song would gradually go silent and Vegeta's adopted voice would say no no the say and the say and the boy <coughs> and the, like uh, the, the song would gradually go up full volume again and this happened six times last time it happened I had actually a piece of paper and a pen and I waited and when I heard the sound well, well not the sound when I heard that the song started to go silent I pushed the brakes as I fast as I could on the bicycle and I wrote what I heard I wrote no no the Saiyan the Saiyan so uh, after that uh, I was still uh, thinking how I would go public since that kind of thing is really really easy to uh, easy to uh, fake so um, there was this one night when I was like with my friends and I was holding the mp3 player everybody was no knew that I thought it was like possessed and I found like as the screen was taken off I found like a serial number that had an ending with G zero D so God and I was not in any belief of God but I was like uh, saying to my friends maybe can you uh, I, uh, I showed the like the serial number to everyone and said that oh uh, maybe the like the uh, the message was from God to me and no one said anything uh, I didn't push anyone else to listen to the like uh, to the mp3 player and and no one wanted even to listen to it. Everybody kind of ignored me. There was this one evening when I forgot my uh, MP3 player to my friend's house. I was like uh, outside of their door, and it would have required me to call them, and they would have the need to go to uh, like open the lower door so to. Like, fully like uh, bring the mp3 to me so uh, as they would have needed to toss it from the balcony from the top floor and it could have broken so I just decided that I will get the mp3 player later and this is the hard part for me since uh, this uh, kinda knows at my credibility since I lost that uh, mp3 player's uh, evidence of possession my one of my friends had changed the whole playlist to finish rap music I didn't listen to rap music and I asked my friend why did you change the music like music on my playlist and he said it's time for you now to start to listen to rap I have nothing against rap like my favorite artist is like Nuya Bess who makes in instrumental rap grip Nuya Bess but uh, and 
I listen to lo-fi music that takes some parts out of from hip hop beats, but uh, I don't listen to rap still. If you listen to rap, good to you, music is a gift from God to us all, and that is the possessed MP3 player. I have told you every story that I have that is from my occult experiences and it will end the video here so if you made it this far thank you really and I know this is a spicy topic so uh, I want to I would appreciate would appreciate them very much since I want to talk about this I kept this uh, thing from age of 18 to age of 19 just out of the public eye when I was over 30 like uh, 32 33 I came forward with this uh, information about occultism so I really want to like talk with people about it so leave a comment if you want to talk about it I would appreciate it very much so thank you really for sticking with me and goodbye